Welcome back to TalkNorth.com. Thank you for listening. If you can, please download before you listen. It helps our business. I'd also like to thank our producer, Brandon Morton, and let you know if you'd like to sponsor this program or any of the programs on the network. You can reach me at jsouhan47 at gmail.com. TalkNorth.com is powered by Bite Squad. Go to BiteSquad.com or download their app. Get food to your door in minutes. Use the promo code TALKNORTH to get your first delivery free. Talk North gets you your first delivery free. Attention business owners and managers. Are you overwhelmed by digital marketing? Are you serious about making 2019 different? Glory Ramsey and Successful Marketing Group want you to blow the doors off 2019 and double your business growth this year. Get started now with a free 45-minute audit and action plan. Glory will personally evaluate your business and create an action plan you can start now. Go to SuccessfulMarketingGroup.com slash Cheryl Reeve. Don't let 2019 start without you. Well, this is a special treat. I'm getting to do a podcast with not only Cheryl Reeve, but also Lindsay Whalen in Lindsay Whalen's office on the University of Minnesota campus. That usually, the snipers do not let me get anywhere near these buildings, so I appreciate you calling off the dogs, letting me actually in here. Uh, seriously, though, this is, this is a special thing for me. Uh, two of the great winners in the history of Minnesota sports, also two of the best people I know. I get to sit here and listen to you guys talk, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to get out of the way, let you guys have a conversation about basketball or whatever you want. This is the Cheryl Reeve Show, part of the TalkNorth.com podcast network. Find all the shows at TalkNorth.com. Dot com. Thanks to Brandon Morton, our producer. Uh, please download before you listen. It's a better listening experience for you. Uh, you can subscribe to iTunes, your favorite podcast app. And if you want to advertise with us, you can reach me at jsouhan47 at gmail.com. i got to start here. You know, Cheryl, you've won four WNBA titles, and Waylon is a rookie coach, and she has a bigger office. <laughs> That's a fact. Uh, my goodness, is this place beautiful. You know, credit to... You know, all the donors of the University of Minnesota and all the, you know, the, the proud alum who, who came together and, and this is what, this is what it takes to allow Lindsay to be successful. You want to be able to bring recruits in and bring them to an office like this, it overlooks an amazing, um, uh, you know, practice facility and, you know, we're looking at some rings and some gold medals. Some and... rings. <laughs> I, I'm I'm really disappointed. You know, Roy Smalley does a, my baseball podcast on the network, and he wears his Twins World Championship ring everywhere he goes. He never takes it off. Why aren't you wearing all these things? Well, other than the chiropractic bills that that would require. Yeah, I mean, for one, they're um, they're really big, um, and then two. Um, I like kind of how this, uh, this sets in the office right here to, um, you know, just show guests basically. Yes. yes. Maybe even some yes. recruits. Yeah, I mean, you know, for whoever, for whoever wants to pop in and, and say hi and chat about, um, the university of Minnesota or basketball or anything really. So, um, yeah, I need to get those out of my house. They were just kind of, I don't know, sitting in the corner oh. in, uh, um, actually they were in a safe, they were in a safe at my house. And so now. No, I'm, uh, you know, trusting that the uh, our security system here at the university <laughs> is really right. good because That's it's right. a lot. It's a lot out here, but it's uh, no, it's um, it's cool. It's it's fun to have all this stuff. Jim, my favorite is the Wheaties box. What Wheaties box? Yes, I don't know if you, if you and you have those, those in your office right. too. I do. Yeah, that was that was a cool thing that that uh, General Mills and Wheaties did. Um, you know, it was kind of like you know back during our time, Jim. It was like to be on the Wheaties box, to be an athlete on the Wheaties box was a really big thing, and and I remember in Detroit. Uh, for the first time when we won and we we got to be on the on the Wheaties box and I remember you know of course all the family members are going ah, I got I went and so went to so and so supermarket got some got the Wheaties box so I, I think that's kind of a, a cool keepsake and to have have Gen- General Mills right here locally that's pretty cool. The most interesting thing to me is in 2011 it was we were on the whole grain box and since then it's <laughs> you know we went from 100 percent whole grain and I feel like you know the nutrition and the um, all that stuff is supposed to just be keeping getting better and better. But I don't know. We went from whole grains to, I don't know. To we don't know what. To okay. we don't know what. So, I don't know. It's a little <laughs> alarming when I actually sit here and look at those. Because I haven't, I never really looked at that, that until you said that. And I was like, well, why does one have whole grains and the rest don't? It's a little bit alarming. 
Yeah, they, they've changed their, their marketing with that, I think. <laughs> I think they, Actually, you want to know the real story on this is they don't yeah. do the Wheaties box anymore. Right. So, you know, because we are here and because we are uh, one of the favorite teams of the area, they actually do the boxes for us. So oh, these are not things you can actually find general, in yeah. stores. We so general, general right here. That, yeah. that'll be our secret, yeah. Before we get too far in the conversation, I do want to thank Lori Ramsey, who uh, owns and runs Successful Marketing Group, SuccessfulMarketingGroup.com. I know Cheryl's friends with Lori, and you know, with 2019 around the corner, a lot of businesses are being overwhelmed by digital marketing and anxious about starting another year without a digital plan. I can't. I have trouble managing all my social media accounts and all the marketing we have to do on the network. Uh, so it's difficult to keep up with, and you kind of want somebody like Lori on your side. Well, there's no question about it. You know, I mean, think about digital media. It's it's not something that you know the average person uh, really truly understands how to to best position themselves. And I, I find Glory to be exceptional in that area, and and be wise if you if you partnered with her. So Lindsay, the big question: just what's this been like? Uh, how has it been? What's it been like to transition in careers? Transition in careers while staying in the same town, while coming back to the University of Minnesota, while trying to launch a program. Well, um, I think recently it's been just kind of figuring out the um, like your day to day, the time management piece. Because, um, like as a player, you come in, you're in the training room, you're getting taped, you're kind of just um, stretching, doing band work, whatever you have to do to be ready, and then you practice, and then you ice bath, and then you go home, and then it's just kind of on the coaches for the next day and it's on you know you watch netflix catch up yeah on the like programs. yeah so you kind of just got to go home and chill more or less um and now not only so today we practice at three so you have all basically all day of different whatever you have to do like to get ready for practice and then when practice finishes now it's okay let me watch video of practice let me see what we need to work on for the next day and then not to mention during the week, if there's an event or there's uh, maybe there's a banquet or there's um, something that I have to go speak at or a dinner or something like that. So then you still have to get all that done. And it's just trying to figure out how that all happens within like 24 hours and trying to manage that schedule. Because like I said, as a player, you come in and then you just what and then whatever your coach tells you, that's what you do. Um, you kind of get a rhythm to it, but then when you leave, you're, that's it. Like you're done. Like you're, I mean, yeah, you're, um, you know, you're icing and you're doing Norma tech, whatever you have to do to get your body ready for the next day. But you're not really, you don't have that other aspect of preparing for the next day that now as a coach that it's, it's, you're in charge of that. Like that's your main thing and figuring out how to get that done every day. Well, she's, she's just beginning. Um, they haven't played a game yet. They haven't traveled yet. Haven't gone through the ups and downs and, and, you know, and then things that come up, I mean, college life, you're going to have, I mean, these are 18 to 22 year olds that, you know, have things that are going to come up. There's going to be class, there's going to be personal stuff. And, you know, those are things we don't have to worry about as much uh, that I think college coaches do. But um, I've never been around a player turned coach that didn't say I had no idea all that, that went into that. And I don't know if Lindsay, I'd put her in that category yet because I think she kind of had an idea um, but there's no really reason to, to think much about it when you're not doing it now as a coach. You know, I think Lindsay's recognizing, I think she's connecting, you know, a lot of the times maybe that you saw your staff, whether it was in Connecticut or here or USAB, you know, just like Lindsay said, when we leave, you know, it, we're, we're not done. You know, it, you know, it, there's just so much that goes into preparation for the next day, for the next week. Um, and I think Lindsay's going to be exceptional at it. A lot of meetings too. Like the meetings within, and then within like the whole, you know, we'll have all the head coaches at a meeting um, within the whole university. We'll have um, just like the staff meeting every day, a weekly staff where it's our whole staff, like with our athletic trainer and our SID and um, our academic, our academic counselor for our team. You know, we have a once a week meeting. So all that too. And then the practice planning meeting with our, with our coaches. It's just more of all that stuff where you have to be on that. And so. Yeah. As a longtime sports writer, I've been around a million coaches, and people in the pro sports work really hard, and there's some burnout risk because of that. But I think, personally, from, you know, just from the outside, it looks to me like coaching colleges might be even more stressful just because you have 18 to 22 year old people walking around that you're supposed to be responsible for. 
I mean, <laughs> have you thought about that, or does that worry you? Or well, I mean, yeah. There's, I mean, there's some you give them. I mean, yeah, you have your, I mean, you have your rules and you have your kind of your expectations and kind of how you want the program to run and your team to run. And I've always told them, especially where we are, that you represent yourself when you're in here. And then anytime you're wearing any of this, go for stuff. People are going to know that you're on the women's basketball team and you have to always carry yourself, you know, to that standard. And that's, that's the way it is. It comes with the, you know, a big responsibility, but it's, it's fun too. There's a lot that goes with that. So, um, yeah, I've tried to just remind them, um, like yesterday was Halloween. So it was like, be safe. And, you know, um, I'll always trying to, um, you know, say those kind of like, I say that a lot more than I, I probably thought I would. Um, well, you're we probably thinking about and, yourself when, when, you know, it wasn't too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> you remember what you did yeah, and I've on had, Halloween. And I've met um, <laughs> a lot of their parents, and so I feel like responsible for making sure that, you know, not only during the hours when we have practice, but all the time we're looking after them. And that's our, you know, one of our, our main responsibilities other than, you know, getting them to graduate and, and win basketball games and whatnot is to make sure that they're, you know, safe and having a really, you know, good experience and having a really, um, you know, productive career here. So um, probably my first time that I knew that that, that was a case where, um, you know, you're, you're talking about 18 to 22-year-olds was the first week of – the first week of practice, um, Annalise, gets, I get a text message. I was already asleep because it was like the first week of practice. Um, actually, you know what? It might have been, it was in September. So it was my first full week here after our season finished. So I took like a week off, came in here. We were getting going like after after Labor Day workouts and everything. It was that first week. So I was already asleep at 10 o'clock because <laughs> I was just exhausted from trying to keep up this, um, trying to keep up this, this schedule and routine. And I get a text from Annalise saying, I was on my moped, I'm okay, but a, a car hit me on my wow. moped, and she hit, so she hit the car, and so I woke up to that text the next morning at like, I don't know, 6 or 7 a.m., and and so I was like, all right, come see me, are you okay, like, how are you, you know, glad you're okay, come see me, and, um, you know, she ended up being out for a little while, but she was, I mean, she was overall okay, but it was just like... Yeah all this stuff, like a moped. She was in a scuba diving class coming home from that at, I think the class, cause she told me about it. I said, what do you, what is there, you know, what do you have tonight? I have scuba diving tonight mm-hmm. from like six to nine. And I was like, what? <laughs> scuba diving? Like, that's the class. That's a thing. She's like, yeah, it's awesome. I can't wait. No, no, no. It's like, all right, good. Well, you know, it's great. You're getting a college credit for that too. That's right. awesome. And then I get, then it's, then that night she had, was driving home and yeah, she got hit on her moped, wow. and it's just like, thank God she was wearing a helmet. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm going to say. So, yeah, that was kind of a quick, like, realization that, yeah, this is like a full time, have your phone on. I yes. can't really, because as a, as a player, too, I would just turn my phone on silent and just, like, you know, I knew if something happened to me, I would tell coach. But, like, you know, if something happened, you know, to Simone, that she would, Simone's not calling me, she's calling coach, you know? So, like, now they're calling me, so I'm like, I have to have my phone on at all times. So, that's right. I've had to, I was a quick lesson in that. I learned that lesson real quick. Yep. Never have my phone on silent anymore. <laughs> One more note about uh, SuccessfulMarketingGroup.com. You can go to com slash Cheryl Reeves. Sign up for a free 45-minute audit and action plan if you want to work with Glory. And we do recommend working with Glory. What's recruiting like? And Cheryl, did you have any experiences where you had to recruit? Yeah, of course. I mean, I you know I was in college coaching for ten years. Um, you know, my first five years—that's what it was all about. We, we built a George Washington program that was not very successful. Landed a couple top recruits, and ended up five years later sixth in the country and doing our thing in the NCAA tournament, and then got a head job. Um, and then you know what? We recruit you know as professional coaches too. I mean, we have free right. agency. Uh, you know, the draft is more of a selection, but, but, uh, free agency is certainly recruiting. So, um, but very, very different than what Lindsay goes through, uh, as the head coach of University of Minnesota. You know, I, I do remember those days. It has changed quite a bit. Um, you know, the technology has really changed the course of, of recruiting. Man, we used to, and, and way well, you probably picture this now that you've been to AAU 
tournaments and, and, and things that you sit at, you're sitting in the bleachers. We used to, if there was a player we were interested in, we would wait until after the game and have to stand in a line that was, if the player was any good, 20 to 30. 